<laughs> Good morning, everyone. If it were up to me, life would be easy. And I'm still not quite sure why it isn't. It seems so simple to me. We are put here to be kind and to learn from others. We've made it usual to be in distress, in pain, grieving and full of guilt. When something bad happens to us, it's life is how we cope. We have made the premise of life a burden and the explanation for any inconvenience. And by no means am I saying that pain isn't a part of life because it's the pain that allows us to feel such high emotions. Being sad can at times be beautiful and I'm grateful to experience such emotions and such beauty. My experience at Brooks has been the farthest thing from easy and now I realize that it was necessary. When I attended SDLC a few months ago, the head of the organization addressed us on the first day. What he said stuck with me. Sometimes you love something so much that you will continue to love it while it hurts you. I think this resonated with me so deeply because this is how I go about my life. And it took me a long time to see that. I'm often told that I love too quickly and care too deeply. I think that's bullshit. I truly believe that you cannot love someone or something too much. It was hard for me to understand why so many people told me, told me this, but it was explained to me by a few friends. They all said that their first instinct when meeting someone is to put their guard up, to assume that that person has bad intentions and they're going to hurt them. It takes time for them to trust and see their true motives. I, on the other hand, am not like this at all. Despite being told that I have an RBF, I truly never think someone is going to harm me. Some call it naive, but I like to think of it more as cherishing every possible moment. When you wait for life to happen, you simply are not living it. Same thing when you meet someone. You're wasting possible good memories because you're too scared of getting hurt. I didn't always think like this though. I was also lost in wanting to get hurt. I wanted more reasons to keep my guard up. When I look back at my time at Brooks, I do not focus on the academics or the sports but rather the culture of being kind. There are few exceptions to this culture, but for the most part, people here are kind. <laughs> I think about the connections I've made with friends, teachers, the dining hall staff, the cleaning staff, and I think back on the little exchanges that made me feel loved in a place that was at times not so loving. The times when people showed me that having my guard up was robbing me from being loved. Brooks can be a very hostile environment and had been for a long time until I started giving more of my energy to people who loved me. There have been people in my life who taught me how to love. They taught me how to take care of them and support them, how to dedicate my time for their benefit. I'm grateful for those experiences, for they have shown me that I love others. <laughs> However, relationships like this can be draining, and I have a hard time acknowledging my own exhaustion. I was exhausted for years, but I thought that was just life. There are people in my life who taught me that I deserve to be loved. They taught me how I enjoy spending my time. They affirmed my feelings and my emotions and cared about my passions. This year, I finally learned how to love correctly. I learned from instances, unrecognizable to others, but memorable to me. I don't think I ever told Emma this, but her family may have saved mine during the midst of the COVID crisis. In July of 2020, Emma invited me to stay with her family and her, her and her family in Sag Harbor. They were already driving through the city so they could pick me up on their drive out. This was gonna be the first time I actually hung out with her and met her parents. I did not know this at the time, but this was going to be the breaking point in my understanding of the value of life. When they pulled up to my house, it was hard to not be embarrassed. I obviously am very grateful for my family, their hard work, and being able to live the life that I do. But I was unsure if they were going to judge us. Going to Brooks has influenced my view on myself and my family. I compared wealth, clothing, houses, cars, and anything that made me feel less accomplished. The internalization of this, unfortunately, made me resent my family at times. This was the first time that anyone from school would be seeing my house, my neighborhood, or much of my family. I was scared Emma would judge me as a person based on where I live. My guard was immediately up. Her dad, Michael, was telling my mom how he knew his way around the neighborhood and that we lived super close to his work. I was confused because I live in Jamaica, Queens, and what in the world can Michael be doing in Jamaica, Queens? <laughs> He said that he's the chairman of the board of the company that runs a food drive a few streets over. I couldn't believe it, and neither could my mom. We looked at each other and both said that we may have heard about it. It was in this moment that I felt the most shame I have ever felt. 
It wasn't because I was embarrassed or bashful. It was because I drove my mom to a point of embarrassment. The truth is that that food tribe was at times the only thing feeding my family during quarantine. My mom couldn't work, and besides the inexpensive canned foods and cheap junk food, our only source of fruits and vegetables were from that food drive and other ones like it. Seeing my mom be filled with shame was heartbreaking. I'm so proud of her for making a life for herself in another country and being able to provide my sister and I with an incredible life. I hated that my internalization of comparison made my mom embarrassed. There's nothing that she should ever be ashamed for. I'm grateful to be even half the person that my mom is. There were two things that this experience had taught me. One is that my feelings toward myself impact people around me. To constantly affirm the people I love because my actions may at times be harmful. Two is that your guard does nothing for you. I was terrified and remained terrified for a while. It was not until the end of my trip that I realized that I may have lost months of good friendship with Emma because of this irrational fear that I had. Through my three years at Brooks, all I did was compare myself to others. I saw a thing on Instagram before, before saying that comparison is the thief, the thief of happiness. And maybe that's why my first few years were rough. I was comparing myself to people's grades, their style, their art, and when I felt incapable of winning a comparison, I just gave up. Brooks taught me that until I was kind to myself, I was not allowing myself to accept others' kindness. Brooks gave me the opportunity to cross paths with people I wouldn't meet in normal circumstances. They put me in the right place at the right time. However, the school has been extremely difficult, and that's okay. I can't compare my Brooks experience with anyone else's. I loved this place when it was continuously hurting me, and I will continue to love it deeply. I am grateful for the unlikely friends that I have met. The ones across the globe in Botswana and the ones 10 minutes away in Valley Stream, the ones in Rentham or North Andover or Boston or everywhere else. My first love for Brooks came from the clear night skies. The stars are much easier to see here rather than the city, and it was beautiful. They make me feel small, and as if my problems are not big enough to compare to the size of the universe. Having people who genuinely care about you and live around the globe makes this place feel a little less lonely and the world a little smaller. If nothing else, I'm grateful for Brooks for making me feel small in a world of worry. Life is complicated and stressful, but that is not all there is to it. Allow yourself to meet new people and create these unlikely friendships because it's those friendships that make life worth living. Before I end, I'm gonna share my favorite manifestation mantra with you guys. I am the universe experiencing itself. I am surrounded and continue to be surrounded by true intentions. I can overcome any challenge that I'm presented with. I'm full of gratitude for everything in my life. Good things come from change, so I embrace the unknown. And what's meant to be, will be. Thank you, Brooks.